I came across Chicken Genius's video explaining the deteriorating market conditions for Tesla. Now, if you go and check out his video, you realize something. That right at the start of his video, he had to sugarcoat and say nice things to Tesla super fans. Now, we've all gotten to such a point that it became unhealthy with really. it. We creators need to take care of the opinions of Tesla super fans and just to soften the blow and avoid hate comments. I think that's really not healthy. So in today's discussion, I'll bring about some of his points and elaborate a bit further. I'll also be sharing with you a particular case study that I've known for quite a long while that illustrates a shining company back in the dot-com bubble crash. And I think now is the right time to draw parallels between Tesla and this company. So if you're curious about it, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Now before we get started, if you are a Tesla super fan, I really think you should seriously listen to what CGS has mentioned. And if you feel offended by what he has said, my feedback is quite possibly you have gotten too emotionally invested into this whole topic already. It could be because previously you laughed at others who didn't hodl onto Tesla stock. And uh, that could be a root cause as to why you could be blinded to some of the change in events that could before this particular company. Now behind CGS's tone, I see a level of humility that explains why he is possibly a successful investor. Because humility requires you to actively keep an open mind. You shouldn't be a perma bull all the time, neither should you be a perma bear all the time. Situations change. You need to Think whether some of your assumptions are correct or not, rather than hold on to something simply because you're emotionally invested and you hate to be wrong. On my own, I actually released this video after Tesla's first quarter 2022 results. This was in start of May 2022. Back then, results were way above expectations for Tesla. I had to eat the humble pie and say that, okay, maybe I've underestimated the growth rate because whatever numbers I plucked in previously, were clearly an underestimate. That's why my conclusion was from a valuation standpoint, with first quarter 2022 results, Tesla could be even cheaper than back in January 2021. I could feel all the dangers of being a bear back then and that's why I left it. But little did I know that it is in fact one of the safest time on hindsight to be a Tesla bear. If you see what has happened to stock price, that kind of explains what has transpired in the next few months ahead. That's why this quote by Ken Fisher. Ken Fisher is the son of a legendary investor that even Warren Buffett has learned from. I'd like to borrow a quote from him. That the market is a great humiliator. I hope to remember this lesson when I leave the, the bear camp for overall markets again. That markets will eventually turn. Because that's my best guess to what could happen in 2023. But let's go back to what CGS has mentioned. And there are two points in particular that I'd like to pull up for discussion. The first is that CGS has mentioned that backlog for Tesla seems to be evaporating. If he were to be true, that could also mean that Tesla's bubble of demand may have finally burst. Demand is always like that. When there's people queuing to buy, and when the prices go up, it actually stimulates more demand. Conversely, when prices start coming down and when there's no queue, people start to shunt it. People start to hold back on purchases. You've seen that happening in food fats already. You see high tea laos queue, you see bubble tea's queue. Things go on like that. When people queue, people want to buy. When there's no queue, people decide to try something else instead. We humans, we have this particular weird trait that could possibly also happen to what we see in Tesla's demand. The second point to bring up for discussion is recession. CGS had mentioned that in recessions, car sales tend to drop. Luxury car sales are possibly the last thing on consumers' mind. I agree with that. And that's why I've also sold out on the Hourglass, a luxury watch seller. If recession were to come, it is very likely that luxury watch demand may have also peaked. But it all rounds back to one truth. Nothing goes up forever. If you are a Tesla permabu and you're holding on to that, you could be avoiding certain realities that could come hard and fast. Now before we get to the second part of the video, smash the like button so that we can reach a bigger audience together. And with that, I'd like to show you one picture of myself and my boy. This is in Star Vista, whereby Tesla actually had a road show over there. So obviously also they're trying to drum up demand and it's actually a pretty interesting marketing drive. 
just now at the start of the video, I mentioned Tesla's growth story and a particular shining star in the dot-com crash. I don't know if you follow this company or not, but Jim Chanos has also mentioned about it. Jim Chanos has compared Tesla to a poster child in 1999's dot-com bubble and suggests there are big risks that Tesla face. He was a short on Tesla, but he's also given up on them. This company that Jim Chanos is mentioning about is actually Cisco. At the height of dot-com bubble crash, Cisco went up by 56 times. You can see from this chart, astronomical growth, correct? And if you have invested at the top of the bubble, it wouldn't have looked anything good on the P&L. In Cisco's journey back in 1990s to year 2000, you also see something that Tesla has done a lot in recent years, and that is stock split. Now, stock split doesn't change the business fundamentals of anything of a company. It simply just gives retail investors more reason to speculate. Just to put it harsh and blunt, this trick can only be used to that far. Cisco's system actually used it multiple times, especially towards the tail end of the dot-com bubble because valuations were rising by the month. At one point, Cisco Systems was the biggest company in the world, even surpassing Microsoft. So the question is, why did Cisco actually search up? Quite simply, it also had firstly, a charismatic CEO. I understand Elon Musk has great vision, that he has a certain mojo and a certain intelligence level that is very appealing to many. And more importantly, his company's stock price has rewarded many. Cisco System also had the same tailwinds. I've read the book by John Chambers, and what I learned during that phase in 1990s to 2000, Cisco was acquiring companies left, right, and center. This is a good book connecting the dots. You hear that back in the heydays, Cisco was actually at the heart of all innovation also. Right now, Tesla seems to be at the heart of all AI innovation. Cisco back then, they were at the heart of all networking innovations. You can say also that it was a super high growth stock. And the growth possibilities for Cisco back then seemed to be endless. Coming to here, I'm not saying that Tesla would fall off the pedestal just like Cisco. What I'm suggesting is that if you know a bit more on history, you realize that these great stories have happened before, it is not unique, and there's every risk that there's a mirror back to the previous poster boy on what could transpire in the years ahead. Be extremely cautious about your Tesla bull theory if you are one. Again, I don't have any positions on Tesla. I'm commenting on it as an investor only, and I wish you all the best in your investment journey. Check out my previous videos. This first one is on my first quarter 2022 Tesla review. Maybe that has some interesting points. Or the second one as to why investors typically not succeed on the financial markets. With that, I'll sign off from here and see you there too. Take care as always. Goodbye.